Algiers is the capital and largest city of Algeria. The city's population at the 2008 census was 2,988,145 and 102011 was estimated to be around 3,500,000. An estimate puts the population of the larger metropolitan city to be around 5 million. Algiers is located on the Mediterranean Sea and in the north-central portion of Algeria. Algiers is situated on the west side of a bay of the Mediterranean Sea. The modern part of the city is built on the level ground by the seashore. The old part, the ancient city of the Dees, climbs the steep hill behind the modern town and is crowned by the Kasbah or citadel, 122 meters above the sea. The Kasbah and the two keys form a triangle. The city's name is derived via French and Catalan Alger from the Arabic name al Jazair, the islands. This name refers to the four former islands which lay off the city's coast before becoming part of the mainland in 1525. Al Jazair is itself a truncated form of the city's older name Jazair Bani Mazana, the islands of the Banu Mazana, sons of Moscana, used by early medieval geographers such as Al Idrisi and Yaqat al Hamawi. In antiquity, the Greeks knew the town as Ikosian, which was Latinized as Icosium under Roman rule. The Greeks explained the name as coming from their word for 20, supposedly because it had been founded by 20 companions of Hercules when he visited the Atlas Mountains during his labors. Algiers is also known as El Bija or Algiers the White for its whitewashed buildings, seen rising from the sea. The city's earliest history was as a small port in the New Media where Berbers were trading with other Mediterraneans. After the Punic Wars, the Romans eventually took over administration of the town, which they called Icosium. Its ruins now form part of the modern city's marine quarter, with the Rue de la Marine following a former Roman road. Roman cemeteries existed near Babel, Wed and Babazouan. The city was given Latin rites by the Emperor Vespasian. The bishops of Icosium are mentioned as late as the 5th century, but the ancient town fell into obscurity during the Muslim conquest of North Africa. The present city was founded in 944 by Bolahini ibn Siri, the founder of the Berber Zirid dynasty. He had earlier built his own house in a Sanaja center at Ashir, just south of Algiers. Although his Zirid dynasty was overthrown by Roger II of Sicily in 1148, the Zurids had already lost control of Algiers to their cousins the Hamadids in 1014. The city was wrested from the Hamadids by the Amahads in 1159, and in the 13th century came under the dominion of the Zionid sultans of Flemken. Nominally part of the Sultanate of Flemken, Algiers had a large measure of independence under Talaba emirs of its own due to Oran being the chief seaport of the Zionids. The Pinon of Algiers, an islet in front of Algiers harbour had been occupied by the Spaniards as early as 1302. Thereafter, a considerable amount of trade began to flow between Algiers and Spain. However, Algiers continued to be of comparatively little importance until after the expulsion of the Moors from Spain, many of whom sought asylum in the city. In 1510, following their occupation of Oran and other towns on the coast of Africa, the Spaniards fortified the islet of Pignon and imposed a levy intended to suppress corsair activity. Algiers by Antonio Salamanca, circa 1540, published in Civitates Orbis Terrarum Abraham Duquesne delivering Christian captives in Algiers after the bombing in 1683. In 1516, the emir of Algiers, Salim B. Tumi, invited the corsair brothers Aruj and Haradine Barbarossa to expel the Spaniards. Aruj came to Algiers, ordered the assassination of Salim, and seized the town and ousted the Spanish in the capture of Algiers. Haradine, succeeding Aruj after the latter was killed in battle against the Spaniards in the fall of Flemken, was the founder of the Pashaluk, which subsequently became the Beylik, of Algeria. Barbarossa lost Algiers in 1524 but regained it with the capture of Algiers, and then formally invited the Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent to accept sovereignty over the territory and to annex Algiers to the Ottoman Empire. Historic map of Algiers by Piri Race Algiers from this time became the chief seat of the Barbary pirates. In October 1541 in the Algiers expedition, the King of Spain and Holy Roman Emperor Charles V sought to capture the city, but a storm destroyed a great number of his ships. And his army of some 30,000, chiefly made up of Spaniards, was defeated by the Algerians under their pasha, Hassan. The bombardment of Algiers by Lord Exmouth, August 1816, painted by Thomas Looney ornate Ottoman cannon found in Algiers on 8th of October, 1581 by C. A. Fair El Mulem. Length, 385 cm, Cal, 178 mm, weight, 2,910 kg, stone projectile. 
seized by France during the invasion of Algiers in 1830. Musée de l'Armée, Paris. Formerly part of the Ottoman Empire but essentially free from Ottoman control, starting in the 16th century Algiers turned to piracy and ransoming. Due to its location on the periphery of both the Ottoman and European economic spheres, and depending for its existence on a Mediterranean that was increasingly controlled by European shipping. Backed by European navies, piracy became the primary economic activity. Repeated attempts were made by various nations to subdue the pirates that disturbed shipping in the western Mediterranean and engaged in slave raids as far north as Iceland. By the 17th century, up to 40% of the city's 100,000 inhabitants were enslaved Europeans. The United States fought two wars over Algiers' attacks on shipping. Among the notable people held for ransom was the future Spanish novelist, Miguel de Cervantes, who was held captive in Algiers for almost five years, and wrote two plays set in Algiers of the period. The primary source for knowledge of Algiers of this period, since there are no contemporary local sources, is the Topografía e Historia General de Argel, published by Diego de Hito, but whose authorship is disputed. This work describes in detail the city, the behavior of its inhabitants, and its military defenses, with the unsuccessful hope of facilitating an attack by Spain so as to end the piracy. A significant number of renegades lived in Algiers at the time, Christians converted voluntarily to Islam many fleeing the law or other problems at home. Once converted to Islam, they were safe in Algiers. Many occupied positions of authority, such as Samson Rowley, an Englishman who became treasurer of Algiers. The city under Ottoman control was enclosed by a wall on all sides, including along the seafront. In this wall, five gates allowed access to the city, with five roads from each gate dividing the city and meeting in front of the Quechua Mosque. In 1556, a citadel was constructed at the highest point in the wall. A major road running north to south divided the city in two, the upper city which consisted of about 50 small quarters of Andalusian, Jewish, Moorish and Kabbal communities and the lower city which was the administrative, military and commercial center of the city, mostly inhabited by Ottoman Turkish dignitaries and other upper-class families. In August 1816, the city was bombarded by a British squadron under Lord Exmouth, assisted by Dutch men-of-war, destroying the Corsair fleet harbored in Algiers. Algiers Depot and Station Grounds of Algerian Railway, 1894 The history of Algiers from 1830 to 1962 is bound to the larger history of Algeria and its relationship to France. On July 4, 1830, under the pretext of an affront to the French consul, whom the day had hit with a fly whisk when the consul said the French government was not prepared to pay its large outstanding debts to two Algerian merchants, a French army under General de Bourmont attacked the city in the 1830 invasion of Algiers. The city capitulated the following day. Algiers became the capital of French Algeria. Many Europeans settled in Algiers, and by the early 20th century they formed a majority of the city's population. During the 1930s, the architect Le Corbusier drew up plans for a complete redesign of the colonial city. Le Corbusier was highly critical of the urban style of Algiers, describing the European district as nothing but crumbling walls and devastated nature, the whole a sullied blot. He also criticized the difference in living standards he perceived between the European and African residents of the city, describing a situation in which the civilized live like rats in holes whereas the barbarians live in solitude, in well-being. However, these plans were ultimately ignored by the French administration. During World War II, Algiers was the first city to be seized from the Axis by the Allies in Operation Terminal, a part of Operation Torch. City and Harbor of Algiers, c. 1921 and 1962, after a bloody independence struggle in which hundreds of thousands died, mostly Algerians but also French and Pienoir, during fighting between the French army and the Algerian Front de Libération Nationale. Algeria gained its independence, with Algiers as its capital. Since then, despite losing its entire Pienoir population, the city has expanded massively. It now has about 5 million inhabitants, or 10% of Algeria's population and its suburbs now cover most of the surrounding Medija Plain. Play media the tense truce between Algerian rebels, French army and the Oish in 1962 Algiers also played a pivotal role in the Algerian war, particularly during the Battle of Algiers when the 10th Parachute Division of the French army. Starting on January 7, 1957, and on the orders of the French Minister of Justice François Mitterrand, led attacks against the Algerian fighters for independence. Algiers remains marked by this battle 
which was characterized by merciless fighting between FLN forces which carried out a guerrilla campaign against the French military and police and pro-French Algerian soldiers. And the French army which responded with a bloody repression, torture and blanket terrorism against the native population. The demonstrations of May 13 during the crisis of 1958 provoked the fall of the Fourth Republic in France, as well as the return of General de Gaulle to power. Algeria achieved independence on July 5, 1962. Run by the FLN that had secured independence, Algiers became a member of non-aligned movement during the Cold War. In October 1988, one year before the fall of the Berlin Wall, Algiers was the site of demonstrations demanding the end of the single-party system and the creation of a real democracy baptized the Spring of Algier. The demonstrators were repressed by the authorities, but the movement constituted a turning point in the political history of modern Algeria. In 1989, a new constitution was adopted that put an end to the one-party rule and saw the creation of more than 50 political parties, as well as official freedom of the press. The city became the theater of many political demonstrations of all descriptions until 1993. In 1991, a political entity dominated by religious conservatives called the Islamic Salvation Front engaged in a political test of wills with the authorities. In the 1992 elections for the Algerian National Assembly, the Islamists garnered a large amount of support in the first round. Fearing an eventual win by the Islamists, the army cancelled the election process, setting off a civil war between the state and armed religious conservatives which would last for a decade. On December 11, 2007, two car bombs exploded in Algiers. One bomb targeted two United Nations office buildings and the other targeted a government building housing the Supreme Court. The death toll was at least 62, with over 200 injured in the attacks. However, only 26 remained hospitalized the following day. As of 2008, it is speculated that the attack was carried out by the Al-Qaeda cell within the city. Indigenous terrorist groups have been actively operating in Algeria since around 2002. Notre Dame d'Afrique, built by European settlers in 1872 astronautical view of Algiers Algiers has a Mediterranean climate. Its proximity to the Mediterranean Sea aids in moderating the city's temperatures. As a result, Algiers usually does not see the extreme temperatures that are experienced in the adjacent interior. Algiers on average receives roughly 600 mm of rain per year, the bulk of which is seen between October and April. The precipitation is higher than in most of coastal Mediterranean Spain, and similar to most of coastal Mediterranean France, as opposed to the interior North African semi-arid or arid climate. Snow is very rare, in 2012, the city received 100 mm of snowfall its first snowfall in eight years. The city of Algiers is composed of 13 administrative districts, subdivided into 57 communes listed below with their populations at the 1998 and 2008 censuses. Algiers Waterfront Cosmopolitan Algiers There are many public buildings of interest, including the whole Casbah Quarter, Martyrs Square. The government offices, the Grand, New, and Quechua Mosques, the Roman Catholic Cathedral of Notre Dame d'Afrique, the Bardo Museum. The old Bibliothèque Nationale d'Alger, a Turkish palace built in 1799-1800, and the new National Library, built in a style reminiscent of the British Library. The main building in the Kasbah was begun in 1516 on the site of an older building, and served as the Palace of the Dees until the French conquest. A road has been cut through the centre of the building, the mosque turned into barracks, and the Hall of Audience allowed to fall into ruin. There still remain a minaret and some marble arches and columns. Traces exist of the vaults in which were stored the treasures of the day. Jamai el Kabir is the oldest mosque in Algiers. It was first built by Yusuf ibn Tashfin, but reconstructed many times. The pulpit bears an inscription showing that the building existed in 1097. The minaret was built by the Sultan of Tlemcen, in 1324. The interior of the mosque is square and is divided into aisles by columns joined by Moorish arches. The new mosque, dating from the 17th century, is in the form of a Greek cross, surmounted by a large white cupola, with four small cupolas at the corners. The minaret is 27 meters high. The interior resembles that of the Grand Mosque. The Church of the Holy Trinity stands at the southern end of the Rue Deasley near the site of the demolished Fort Babazou and Babizoun. The interior is richly decorated with various colored marbles. Many of these marbles contain memorial inscriptions relating to the British residents of Algiers from the time of John Tipton the first English consul, in 1580. One tablet records that in 1631 two Algerine pirate crews landed in Ireland, sacked Baltimore, and enslaved its inhabitants. 
the Quechua Mosque the Quechua Mosque, at the foot of the Kasbah, was before independence in 1962 the Cathedral of St. Philippe, itself made in 1845 from a mosque dating from 1612. The principal entrance, reached by a flight of 23 steps, is ornamented with a portico supported by four black vein marble columns. The roof of the nave is of Moorish plaster work. It rests on a series of arcades supported by white marble columns. Several of these columns belong to the original mosque. In one of the chapels was a tomb containing the bones of Geronimo. The building seems a curious blend of Moorish and Byzantine styles. Algiers possesses a college with schools of law, medicine, science and letters. The college buildings are large and handsome. The Bardo Museum holds some of the ancient sculptures and mosaics discovered in Algeria, together with metals and Algerian money. The port of Algiers is sheltered from all winds. There are two harbours, both artificial, the old or northern harbour and the southern or Aga harbour. The northern harbour covers an area of 95 hectares. An opening in the south jetty affords an entrance into Aga harbour, constructed in Aga Bay. Aga harbour has also an independent entrance on its southern side. The inner harbour was begun in 1518 by Karad din Barbarossa, who, who accommodated his pirate vessels, caused the island on which was Fort Penon to be connected with the mainland by a mole. The lighthouse which occupies the site of Fort Penon was built in 1544. Algiers was a walled city from the time of the Dees until the close of the 19th century. The French, after their occupation of the city, built a rampart, parapet and ditch, with two terminal forts, Babazou and Babhizoun to the south and Bab el wet Aid to the north. The forts and part of the ramparts were demolished at the beginning of the 20th century, when a line of forts occupying the heights of Bouzeri a Bouzerit above the sea, took their place. Notre Dame d'Afrique, a church built in a mixture of the Roman and Byzantine styles, is conspicuously situated overlooking the sea, on the shoulder of the Bouzeria hills, three kilometers to the north of the city. Above the altar is a statue of the Virgin depicted as a black woman. The church also contains a solid silver statue of the Archangel Michael, belonging to the confraternity of Neapolitan fishermen. Villa Abad el Tif, former residence of the day, was used during the French period, to accommodate French artists, chiefly painters, and winners of the Abad el Tif prize, among whom were East Boidel, for a while of two years. Nowadays, Algerian artists are back in the villa's studios. The Monument of the Martyrs Grand Post Office The El Jadid Mosque at the Place des Martyrs Algiers has a population of about 3,335,418. The ethnic distribution is 53% from an Arabic-speaking background, 44% from a Berber-speaking background and 3% foreign-born. Ministry of Finance of Algeria Algiers is an important economic, commercial and financial center, with in particular a stock exchange with a capitalization of 60 million euros. The city has the highest cost of living of any city in North Africa, as well as the 50th highest worldwide, as of March 2007, having gained one position compared to the previous year. Mohammed Ben Ali El Aber, President of the Council of Administration of the Emirate Group Imar, presented five mega-projects to Algerian President Abdelaziz Bouteflika. During a ceremony which took place Saturday July 15, within the Palace of the People of Algiers. These projects will transform the city of Algiers and its surroundings by equipping them with a retail area and restoration and leisure facilities. The first project will concentrate on the reorganization and the development of the infrastructures of the railway station Aga located in the downtown area. The ultramodern station intended to accommodate more than 80. 000 passengers per day will become a center of circulation in the heart of the grid system, surrounded by commercial offices and buildings and hotels intended for travelers in transit. A shopping center and three high-rise office buildings rising with the top of the commercial zone will accompany the project. The second project will not relate to the Bay of Algiers and aims to revitalize the seafront. The development of the 44-kilometer seafront will include marinas, channels, luxury hotels, offices, apartments of great standing, luxury stores and leisure amenities. A crescent-shaped peninsula will be set up on the open sea. The project of the Bay of Algiers will also comprise six small islands, of which four of round form, connected to each other by bridges and marinas and will include tourist and residential complexes. Air Algerie had office in place of Don near the University of Algiers, in Algiers Centre the third project will relate to restructuring an area of Algiers, qualified by the originators of the project of City of Wellness. El Aber indicated to the journalist that the complex would be agreeable for all those which will want to combine tourism and well-being or tourism and relaxation. 
The complex will include a university, a research center and a medical center. It should also include a hospital complex, a care center, a hotel zone, an urban center and a thermal spa with villas and apartments. The university will include a medical school and a school for care male nurses which will be able to accommodate 500 students. The university campus will have the possibility of seeing setting up broad ranges of buildings of research laboratories and residences. Another project relates to technological implantation of a campus in Sidi Abdella, 25 kilometers southeast from Algiers. This 90 hectares site will include shopping centers, residential zones with high standard apartments and a golf course surrounded by villas and hotels. Two other residential zones, including one. 800 apartments and 40 high standard villas, will be built on the surrounding hills. The fifth project is that of the tourist complex Colonel Aves, which will be located 25 kilometers west from Algiers. This complex will include several retail zones, meeting places, and residential zones composed of apartments and villas with views of the sea. There is another project under construction, by the name of Algiers Medina. The first step of the project is nearly complete. A Hewlett-Packard office for French-speaking countries in Africa is in Algiers. Panorama of the city is seen from Bolahini district some 20 kilometers to the west of Algiers are such seaside resorts as Sidi Frige, Palm Beach, Douaida, Zeralda, and the Club of the Pines. There are tourist complexes, Algerian and other restaurants, souvenir shops, supervised beaches, and other amenities. The city is also equipped with important hotel complexes such as the Hotel Hilton, El Orisi or El Gizr. Algiers also has the first water park in the country. The tourism of Algiers is growing but is not as developed as that of the larger cities in Morocco or Tunisia. The presence of a large diplomatic community in Algiers prompted the creation of multiple international educational institutions. These schools include, there was formerly the Ecole Japonaise d'Alger, a school for Japanese children. Public transport of Algiers Various means of transport in Algiers Four urban beltways, Algiers is the sporting center of Algeria. The city has a number of professional clubs in the variety of sports, which have won national and international titles. Among the sports facilities within the city, there is an enormous sporting complex, Complex of Oko, Mohamed Boudif. This includes the Stade 5 Juliet 1962, a venue for athletics, an Olympic swimming pool, a multi-sports room, an 18-hole golf course, and several tennis courts. The following major sporting events have been held in Algiers, Major association football club based in Algiers include, Algiers is twinned with, in addition. Many of the wards and cities within Algiers maintain sister city relationships with other foreign cities. Algiers has cooperation agreements with, The Battle of Algiers, Italian-Algerian movie by Gillo Ponte Corvo. Thanks for watching.